Gotta have a right good head on your shoulders. Cause they will try to, you feel me? Make you fall off just to say you fell off. Before Blueface would drop tracks like Respect My Crippin, Dead Lokes, and Thoughtiana, before Blueface would sign to WAC 100 and Birdman with Cash Money West, before he would garner over 250K followers on Instagram, I'm not sure what kind of factory is breeding these rappers, but they just keep popping up and their names, their stories, their sound, and of course their face tattoos just keep getting weirder. Look at me. Come on. Hold on, let me hit on this one. Yeah, come on. Blueface has only been rapping for a year, but in that short time, he has become one of the most polarizing figures in rap. With his offbeat flow, eccentric personality, and his tattoo on his face of Benjamin Franklin, who's on the $100 bill, which is a blue bill, therefore has a blue face on it. So he has a blue face on his face, I guess. I see the connection. Everything on my head, I just wanted to, I didn't want to, I was tired of people asking me what I was thinking about, so <laughs> see what I'm thinking about, man. That's right. There's no in-between with this guy. People either love or hate him. Pitchfork recently wrote, public service announcement, Blueface is good. Blueface is a West Coast rapper who grew up involved in the street life. He received a football scholarship to head to North Carolina, but after becoming depressed, he soon moved back home. After working a few minimum wage jobs, through a moment of fate, he found himself in a studio, and after he heard back his first recording, the rest is history. But just to be clear, he says he is no rapper. He is in fact, a choir orchestrator. fighting the good fight, amen. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Jeremy Hecht, but I am better known in the comment section as things like Michael's younger brother, Michael's son, Michael if his auto-tune stopped working, and many more. But I am here to help out so that Michael can make as many videos as possible. We've covered a lot of other rappers, including Trippy Red and Skinny from The Nine, so be sure to check those out after you finish watching this video. Also be sure to check out Famous New every Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. on this channel. But for now, let's jump into Blueface's come up because you've been asking for this one in the comments. Also, I was wearing a blue shirt before for this video in honor of Blueface, but I got some pit stains, so I had to uh, change. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Blueface was born Jonathan Porter on January 20th, 1997 in Los Angeles, California, and grew up as a member of the Schoolyard Crips. Named after Blueface, the blue hundred dollar bills, the blue flakes. Everybody think it's because I'm a Crip? That too, Fuck it, that too. Schoolyard, Bob, yeah. Not much is known about his early childhood, but we do know that he moved around a lot from school to school all over LA attending school in Burbank, Golden Valley, Bell Jeff High School, and many more, even going to school in Oakland after his dad moved there. He had an older brother who was heavily involved in gang life, introducing Blueface to the game, but also looking out for him, making sure he stayed out of trouble. Growing up, he used to listen to rappers like The Game, Snoop, 50 Cent and G-Unit, and Drake, but he wasn't really thinking about rap as a career. He played football growing up and was a standout quarterback in high school from 2012 to 15, and I even found an LA Times article from his time playing at Arlita High, where he passed for 330 yards in their 2014 season opener, including a game-winning 66-yard touchdown pass. He recently said that if he knew he would have blown up like this back then, he would have started rapping at the age of 15. His football skills took him all the way to North Carolina, where he attended Fayetteville State University on a scholarship, or as Cole calls it, the Ville. He said the location was way too far from home, and he began to feel homesick. But after some time, his feelings grew more intense and he fell into a state of depression. It was cool, it was just too far. Uh, got real depressed. People say it was homesick, but I guess I call it that too. Yeah. He said it was a really big change for him moving away. Blueface decided to move back to Los Angeles and he played football for a short period of time after moving back, telling himself he would play Juco junior college football. But one day after crashing his car, he gave up on his football dreams and began to work. His first job after coming back home was at an office depot. He ended up getting fired from that job, but he was definitely selling a little bit more than staplers and carbonless printer paper. 
because he says, they had enough to fire me from the job, but they didn't catch what I was really doing. It's disappointing because he could have become the next Dwight Schrute, but he moved on to other jobs, including cutting hair and even got a barber pole tatted on his neck. Shortly after being fired from Office Depot, he got a full-time job doing maintenance for an apartment building, which he says was a pretty good gig, but again, he got depressed doing that. That was like a full-time, eight, nine to five, and I got depressed doing that. I guess Blueface wasn't really meant for the nine to five life. He got heavily caught up in the street life and was getting in trouble selling drugs, but says he knew he wanted to find something that would last forever. Well, fate had his back because when he was 19, he started hanging around more of the artistic side of the schoolyard crips and seeing guys who were trying to make it out through rapping. He would hang out with his friend and rapper TC4800 and went to a couple shows with him. He wasn't thinking about rapping seriously, but thought it was just cool to be on the scene. One night, Blueface dropped TC off and realized TC had left his iPhone aux charger in Blueface's car. TC invited him to the studio to drop it back off for him. Started hanging out with uh, all my guys in LA and I went to a show or two. It was cool. I still wasn't thinking about rapping or going to a show. Blueface pulled up to the studio where everyone was writing to a beat. He decided if he was already there, he might as well write something too. He put the pen to the pad and got in the booth, recorded his verse, and... So I think okay. it was Destiny because he invited me just to get the piece. He would have never invited me to the studio on a regular every day. He said once he heard his voice on the playback, he was sold. And from there, the rap dream became a reality. He started dropping songs on his SoundCloud page, gaining some local buzz, but it was really his track, Dead Lokes, that really started blowing up online, garnering close to three million plays. He says, I was waiting for a hit song. I knew that's all I needed. Once I had a hit song, I just had to manipulate everything else. Doing it strategically, he waited until he had a hit song before doing his first video and waited to build a fan base before putting out his first project. On March 17th, he dropped a video for Dead Lokes on YouTube and the song now has close to 4 million plays. A lot of his hard work is inspired by his son. He even put him in the Dead Lokes music video. Once he had a kid, Blueface said he felt like he had to go harder for his family, telling Genius, when he was born, I had to go harder than hard to actually make it happen and actually be grown and be able to feed me and my family. Not just living for me no more. Once the song started gaining buzz, he went on Instagram and asked for everyone to comment their city under his video so that he could perform live for his fans. After a while, he started seeing a lot of high schools in the comments, and it was Takeets High School in California, please don't get mad at me if I messed up the pronunciation, who had the most comment requests, so they became the school to receive his first performance. And I've gotta say, it was a spectacle. Blueface was shirtless rapping on top of his car with high school kids going bananas. The high school tour continued as he'd perform at Lancaster's Courts Hill High and Willowbrook's King Drew High over the next two Fridays after the final school bell rang. Following his high school tour, he would do meet and greets at the mall for those unable to attend his shows. He was taking pictures and kids were asking for his autograph. He even signed a couple of iPhones. It felt amazing, man. It felt like all my work was, you know, in front of my face now. After so many requests from fans, he made a Dead Lokes Part 2, which has nearly 2 million plays on SoundCloud. And he recorded the six track EP, Famous Crip, two weeks after the buzz from Dead Lokes Part 2, because he wanted to keep people's attention. A few months later, he released the Too Cocky EP. Blueface was being accused of having fake jewelry by some of his haters, so the only logical thing to do was videotape himself showering with his ice on to prove it was real. He didn't realize that he was accidentally posting a video of his uh, junk to his Instagram story, so he was fully exposed and people screenshotted the story and he says they were threatening to leak it online, so there was only one thing left to do. He used a pic of it as the cover art for his next single. Like a man dick? He said his D was looking hurt and it wasn't the most flattering picture from his Insta story, so he needed redemption by taking a flick of his own. This story just shows how hard social media management really is. I didn't know my dick was in it until somebody tagged me on their story like, oh. His friends and gang member homies were definitely a little bit thrown off by the strategy, but it was a bold move that he felt was right. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. But it wasn't just his tattoos and naked pics that got him noticed. It was actually his voice. A lot of his attention has come from his distinct but highly unorthodox flow. 
He's been compared to E40, Juvenile, Silk to Shocker, and Sugar Free. I personally think he sounds a little bit like T Grizzly, but 10 times more delayed. When he raps, it almost sounds like he's trying to run away from the beat instead of flowing over top of it. He go on my court. I don't go on the beat of court. I, I know. noticed that. There's a lot of people that's in the same lane making the same sound. So I knew if I made something different, that just sounded different, make you feel different. As always, the comment section on YouTube provided some great entertainment when talking about what his voice sounds like, but that's just YouTube for you. I've only been making videos on this channel for a month, and I've already read that my voice is so annoying, it makes people want to kill themselves. So take it however you want. But once Twitter found out about Blueface, the memes started flying. This only fueled his popularity. Even Lil Pump is feeling Blueface and wants to collab on a remix of his song, Respect My Crippin'. Hey, y'all gonna tell Blueface, I wanna hop on that shit right now. Pump wasn't the only one to take notice as Birdman and WAC 100 signed the rapper to Cash Money West Records. I'm still not sure why anyone would sign with Cash Money in 2018, seeing how well it's gone with all of their other artists. Part of five coming soon, Cash Money. Oh, did I did I say that? I don't want I don't want any problems with Wack 100 or Birdman for that matter. So actually, I take it back. It was a great move. It's a good move. Good signing. Stop playing with my name. I ain't gonna say it no more. Most recently, Blueface was arrested after allegedly retaliating against a suspect who robbed him at a gas station in New Hill, California. He caught up to him in his Mercedes sedan and allegedly opened fire at the vehicle. He ended up crashing his car and being taken in by police, arrested and booked on suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon. Blueface spent the weekend in jail, but on that Sunday morning, he was released on $50,000 bail. They done f***ed up and freed the famous crip, kid. They done f***ed up. Back on my bush. As the internet continues to discover Blueface, I have no doubt that his popularity will continue to rise. And whether you like him, love him, or love to hate him, I'm not sure that he's going anywhere anytime soon. But as for the rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is before they were famous. My name is Jeremy Heck, dream good, live better, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have one hecked of a day. Peace.